Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at two infinite series. We have the 1 plus r plus r squared and so on and so forth. And we have 1 plus r cubed plus r to the 6th power plus dot dot dot. And the ratio is 7 fourths. Of course, r has to have some restrictions given that these are geometric series. r has to be between negative 1 and 1 for these series to converge. Now, given that condition, let's go ahead and evaluate the top first. How do you evaluate something like this? 1 plus r plus r squared dot dot dot. Obviously, more rigorously, we should be looking at a partial sum and then take the limit as n approaches infinity, so on and so forth. But I'm going to skip those details and jump right into the infinite case. All right, so suppose this sum converges and is, e is equal to s. How do you evaluate the sum in terms of r? So I'm going to use a little trick here. Multiply both sides by r. So that's going to be rs, r. And we're just going to get pretty much everything. But um, it's going to start with r. And then I would like to subtract these terms side by side. The left hand side is going to become s minus rs. And the right hand side, pretty much everything is going to, is going to cancel out except for 1. So we're going to end up with 1 here. And then from here, we can factor out s. And then s becomes, if r is between negative 1 and 1 again, if you have a finite sum, it's going to equal 1 over 1 minus r. So this is equal to 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed dot dot dot, so on and so forth. Great. So this is a really practical formula for evaluating these kinds of sums as long as they converge. Of course, for example, if r is equal to 2, uh, you're going to get uh, sums of uh, a sum of powers of 2, like 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared, dot, 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 which is going to be obviously a divergent sum or series. But on the left hand side, you're going to get something like 1 over 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So obviously, this is not going to work for r values that are greater than or equal to 1 and values that are less than or equal to negative 1. So our r has to be between negative 1 and 1. Great. Given that condition, let's go ahead and evaluate this ratio. We already have a sum for this. So we can basically use it to evaluate the denominator. How do you evaluate the denominator? Just replace r with r cubed, right? Because that's what happened here. So you can also think of it as a composition, right? Replacing r with r cubed in that function. So now... Since our sum was given in terms of r, we can basically write this as 1 over 1 minus r cubed. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and look at the ratio of these two series and set it equal to 7 fourths. So the numerator is 1 over 1 minus r. And the denominator is 1 over 1 minus r cubed. And we know that this is equal to 7 over 4. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression as much as possible. At the end, we're also going to be looking at the graph of this. I know that this is discrete and r is only, you know, taking certain values or, I mean, now you can replace r with pretty much anything, but we don't have to look at it in the discrete sense. Anyways, we're going to be looking at some graphs at the end. So let's go ahead and uh, notice that r cannot equal 1 here. And let's go ahead and flip and multiply. We get 1 minus r cubed divided by 1 minus r equals 7 fourths. By using difference of two cubes, I can factor the numerator as 1 minus r multiplied by 1 minus r plus r squared. And the denominator just stays the same. As long as r does not equal 1, we can simplify this and end up with a quadratic. Let's go ahead and solve that quadratic equation and see what happens from there r squared plus r plus 1 is equal to 7 fourths. I, I think at this point it would make sense if you multiply both sides by 4. 4r four squared plus 4r plus 4 is equal to 7. And then we can basically, you know, subtract 3 from both sides, right? And by subtracting 3, we're getting a 4 on the right-hand side. And... On the left-hand side, we get a perfect square. That's why I wanted to do it. You could also use the quadratic formula if you want. Same thing. But let's just use this approach. 
Uh, we have 2r plus 1 quantity squared equals 4. I could write it as 2 squared. And then from here we get two solutions, right? There are two numbers whose square equals 4. And those numbers are 2 and negative 2. So if 2r plus 1 is equal to 2, I mean, yeah, is the positive solution, right? Then from here we get 2r equals 1 and r equals 1 half. And since 1 half is between negative 1 and 1, this is going to work. Great. Let's go ahead and look at the other solution. If you set 2r plus 1 equal to negative 2, you get 2r equals negative 3 and r equals negative 3 halves. Unfortunately, our r value has to be between negative 1 and 1. Remember, in order for our series to converge, but negative 3 halves is outside that interval therefore we're not going to be able to accept it even though it looks like a solution to this equation it is not going to work because if you take powers of negative three halves and add you're going to get an infinite sum okay great now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this as a function and then we can kind of discuss a little bit more on this Okay, let's go to the graph of it. And here's the graph of y equals 1 minus x cubed divided by 1 minus x. So what is what is so special about this graph? First of all, notice that our function is undefined at x equals 1. Uh, it's expected because x equals 1 makes it uh, undefined, sort of, kind of like a 0 over 0. So we have a hole at 0. So this is not continuous everywhere. And then we notice that if we set the y value equal to 7 fourths, in other words, if we set this to 7 fourths, we get two x values from here. And those x values are 0 0.5 and negative 1.5. So the horizontal line basically intersects this function at two points, this parabola, by the way, and I'll tell you what parabola this is. But negative uh, 1 half is not a solution so it, it is a solution to this equation but not it does not work for our infinite series because our infinite series is only convergent if x or r is on a certain interval so we have that extra requirement for the infinite series okay great so let's go ahead and see why this is shaped like a parabola and it is actually a parabola the only problem is we have a hole because it is undefined at x equals 1. All right, great. So let's see why this is a parabola, because remember, we had simplified this before, and when we did, we got the following, right? From difference uh, so of two cubes, this gave us 1 plus x plus x squared, and that's definitely a parabola that doesn't intersect the x-axis because its discriminant is less than 0, so it has no real roots, but it intersects the graph, the horizontal line y equals 7 fourths, at two points, but we can only accept one of these values for our infinite series. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.